struck me out on that pavement to be the last day. Comes up to me, parks a bucket of rubbish at me. Tells me to take it out of the back. It's not my job to take out the bucket. I got a boy there to take out the bucket. I wasn't engaged to take out buckets. My job's cleaning the floors, clearing up the tables, doing a bit of washing up. Nothing to do with taking out buckets. I told him what to do with his bucket tonight. <laughs> Did you hear what I said to the governor after he gave me the bullet? Look here, I said, I got my rights. And I told him that. I might have been on the road, but nobody's got more rights than I have. Let's have a bit of fair play, I said. Anyway, give me the bullet. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. If you hadn't come out and stopped that Scotch git, I'd be inside the hospital now. I'd have cracked me head on that pavement if he'd have landed. I'd have cracked me bastard head. Do you want to sit down for a couple of minutes? Lucky you come into that calf. I've been left for dead more than once. What's this then? Where I live. A couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah, that'll be all right. I wouldn't say no to that. The old thing's interfered with my plans now, you see? You see what I mean? Look at all this bastard ice. <laughs> I mean, when's it gonna go? I'm thinking things out all over again now, you see? Up here. All the way up. Filthy skate. An old man like me. I've had dinner with the best. They got no respect, you see? Ten minutes off, a tea break in the middle of the night in that place, and I couldn't find a seat, not one. All them blacks had it. Blacks, drinks, poles, all them aliens had it. Take a seat. Yes, well, what I got to do first, you see, what I got to do, I got to loosen myself up, you see what I mean? I could have got done in down there. Do you want to roll yourself one of these? What? Uh, no, no thanks, I never smoke a cigarette. I tell you what, though, I'll have a bit of that tobacco there for my pipe, if you like. Yes, go on, take some out of there. Thanks, that's kind of you, mister. Uh, just enough to fill my pipe, that's all. All them toe rags, mate, they got the manners of pigs. I might have been on the road a few years, but you can take it from me, I'm clean. I keep myself up. 
That was why I left my wife. Fortnight after I married her, I... No, not so much as that, no more than a week. I took the lid off a saucepan. Do you know what was in it? A pile of our underclothing, unwashed. Where shall I put it? I'll take it. The pan for vegetables, it was, a vegetable pan. That's when I left her and I haven't seen her since. I'd have cracked me head on that pavement if he'd have landed. That Scotch git. I've seen today I was as handy as any of them. <laughs> they didn't take any liberties with me. I'll get him. One night, I'll get him. <laughs> when I find myself around that direction. I wouldn't mind so much, but I left all my belongings in that place. All of them, the lot there was, you see, in this bag in the back room there. Every lousy blasted bit of all my bleeding belongings are left down there now. The rush of it. Betty's having a good poke around in it now, this very minute. I'll pop down sometime and I'll pick them up for you. Anyway, I'm obliged to you, letting me, uh... Let him have a bit of a rest like for a few minutes. This your room? Yes. You've got a good bit of stuff here. Yes. There's enough of it. There's a good bit of it, all right. You sleep here, do you? Yes. What, in that? Yes. Yes, well, you'd be well out of the draft there. You don't get much wind. Well, you'd be well out of it. Different when you're kipping out. Yes. When the wind gets up, it's... <laughs> mm. It's very drafty. <coughs> this is your house, then, is it? I'm in charge. You landlord, are you? I noticed there was someone uh, living in the house next door. Yes. A family of Indians live there. Blacks. I don't see much of them. Black eh? Well, I'll tell you what, mate. You haven't got a spare pair of shoes. Shoes? Them bastards at the monastery let me down again. Where? Down at Luton, at monastery, down at Luton. I got a mate at Shepherd's Bush, you see. I might have a pair. I got this mate at uh, Shepherd's Bush. In the convenience. Well, it was in the convenience. He ran about the best convenience I got. He ran about the best one. I always used to slip me a bit of soap any time I went in there. <laughs> Very good soap. Uh, they, uh, they have to have the best soap. I was never without a piece of soap any time I happened to be knocking around the Shepherd's Bush area. Bearer Brown. He's gone now. Uh, went. His image put me on to this monastery uh, just the other side of Luton. He'd had their giveaway shoes. You've got to have a good pair of shoes. Shoes, it's life and death to me. I had to go all the way down to Luton in these. What happened when you got there? Do you know what that bastard monk said to me? How many more blacks have you got around here, then? What? Have you got any more blacks around here? See if these are any good. Do you know what that bastard monk said to me? I think those would be a bit small. Would they? Well, they don't look the right size. Not bad trim. Can't wear shoes that don't fit. M nothing worse. I said to this monk... Here, I said, uh, look here, uh, mister, I said. He, he opened the door. Big door. He opened it. Look, I said, I come all the way down here 
Uh, I showed him these. Your uncle got a pair of shoes, I said. A, a pair of shoes enough to keep me on the way. Uh, look at these, I said. They're nearly out. They're, they're no good to me. I heard you got a stock of shoes down here. Piss off, he says to me. Now, look here, I said. I'm an old man. I said, you ain't got no right to talk to me like that. I don't care who you are. If you don't piss off, he says, I'll kick you all the way to the gate. Now, now look, I said, now, wait a minute. All I'm asking for is a pair of shoes. You don't want to start taking liberties with me. It's taken me three days to get out here. Three days without a bite. I'm worth a bite to eat, aren't I? Get out round the corner to the kitchen, he says. Get out round the corner. When you've had your meal, piss off, out of it. Meal, I said, what do you think I am, a dog? Nothing better than a dog. What do you think I am, a wild animal? What about all them shoes I come all the way down here to get? I heard you was giving away. I have a good mind to report you to your mother superior. Another of them, an Irish hooligan, come at me. I cleared out. I took a shortcut to Watford, picked up a pair there. I got on to the North Circular, just past Endon. The sole come off right where I was walking. Lucky I had my old ones wrapped up. I, they're still carrying them. Otherwise, I'd have been finished, man. <laughs> so I've had to stay with these. They're gone. They're no good. All the good's gone out of them. Try these. Not a bad pair of shoes. This leather's hardy, isn't it? Very hardy. The bloke tried to flog me some suede the other day. <coughs> I wouldn't wear them. Can't beat leather for wear. Suede goes off, it, it creases, it stains for life in five minutes. You can't beat leather. Yes. Good shoe, this. Good. Don't fit, though. Oh. No, you see, I got a very broad foot. Ah. These are a bit uh, pointed, you see. Mm. They'd cripple me in a week. And, I mean, these ones I got on, they're not much good, but at least they're comfortable. They're, they're not much cop, but at least they, they don't hurt. <laughs> um, thanks anyway, mister. I'll see what I can look out for you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. I can't go on like this. <laughs> can't get from one place to another, you see. I'll have to be moving about, uh, trying to get uh, fixed up. Where are you going to go? Well, I've got one or two things in mind. I'm just uh, waiting for the weather to break. I would... Um, would you like to sleep here? Yeah. You can sleep here if you like. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. How long for? Till you get yourself fixed up. Oh, I... Get yourself uh, that... sorted out. I'll be f fixed up any day now, I'll tell you. <laughs> Where would I sleep? Here. The other rooms would be no good to you. Here. Where? There's a bed beneath all this. Hey. Oh, well, that's handy. <laughs> well, I tell you what, then, I might do that, just till I get myself uh, sorted out. <laughs> you got enough for furniture here. I picked it up. Just keeping it here for the time being. This uh, gas stove work, do it? No. What do you do for a cup of tea? Nothing. That's a bit rough. Are you uh, building something? I might build a shed out at the back. Carpentry, eh? <laughs> I like working with my hands. What's this? It's a Buddha. Gatan. Yes. I quite like it. I picked it up in a shop. Looked quite nice to me. Don't know why. What do you think of these Buddhas? Oh, they're all right, aren't they? Yes. I was pleased when I got hold of this one. It's very well made. This the bad ear, then, is it? Yes. We'll get rid of all the stuff. I 
I'll just put this here for a minute. Yes. Is this in use at all, then? No. How are you off for money? Oh, well, to tell you the truth, mister, I'm a bit short. Here's a few bob. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck. I just happened to find myself a bit short, you see. I, I got nothing for all that week's work I done last week. That's the position, that's what it is. I went into a pub the other day, ordered a Guinness. They gave it to me in a thick mug. I sat down, but I couldn't drink it. I can't drink Guinness out of a thick mug. Only like it out of a thin glass. I had a few sips, but I couldn't finish it. If only the weather would break, then I'd be able to get down to Sidcup. Sitka. The weather's so blasted bloody awful. How can I get down to Sitka in these shoes? Why do you want to go down to Sitka? I got my papers there. You what? I got my papers there. What are they doing at Sitka? The man I know has got them. I left them with him. You see, they prove who I am. I, I can't move without them papers. They tell you who I am. I'm lost without them. Why is that, then? Well, you see, what... What it is, you see, I, I changed my name. Years ago, I've been going around and, and uh, an assumed name. It's not my real name. What name have you been going under? Jenkins. Bernard Jenkins. I got an insurance card here. Uh, see, look, under the name of Jenkins, uh, uh, Bernard Jenkins. Uh, it got four, four stamps on it. It's nice to be going along with these. I take that card along, I go in the nick. I got no rights. Any time you want to get into your bed, just get in. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> well, then I think I will. To tell you the truth, mister, I'm a bit, uh, a bit done in. See, so you've got a bucket up there. Leak. Uh, where's the...
It's got a sink in here. Here you are. You don't share it, do you? What? You don't uh, share this toilet with them blacks, do you? They live next door. They don't come in. Because, I mean, fair's fair. Well, I'll leave you to it. What's this? What's this? It's all right. What's this? It's all right. Oh, yes. Sleep well? Yes, dead out. Well, it must have been dead out. Were you dreaming or something? Dreaming? What do you mean? You were making noises. Now, wait a minute. That. Now, wait a minute. What do you mean? What sort of noises? You were making groans. You were jabbering. Jabbering? I don't jabber, man. What did I be jabbering about? You got hold of the wrong bloke, mate. Maybe it was the bed. Nothing wrong with this bed. Might be a bit unfamiliar. There's nothing unfamiliar about me with beds. I slept in beds. I don't make noises just because I sleep in a bed. I slept in plenty of beds. I tell you what, maybe it was them blacks. What? Maybe it was them blacks making noises coming up through the walls. Hmm. Where are you going? You going out? Yes. Oh, wait a minute then, just a minute. What are you doing? Well, I better come with you. Why? Well, don't you want me to get out when you're out? You don't have to go out. Why, you mean I can stay here? Do what you like. You don't have to go out because I'm going out. I've got a couple of keys. This door, front door. Thanks very much, the best of luck. I, um, I think I'll take a stroll down the road. Little kind of a shop. Man down there, he got a portable drill the other day. I quite like the look of it. Portable drill, eh? Yes. <laughs> what did you say your name was? Bernard Jenkins, uh, my assumed name. No, your real one. Davis. Mac Davis. Welsh, are you? Hey. You Welsh? Well, I've been around a bit, you know. I've been about. Where were you born? What do you mean? Where were you born? I... Well, it's a bit hard, like, to set your mind back. Going back a few years, you'll lose a bit of track, like. <laughs> See what I mean? Uh, um, what about this gas stove? Do you, do you think it's going to be letting out any... Uh, what do you think? It's not connected. I might be down to Wembley later on in the day. Yes? Uh, yes, there's a calf down there, see? Um, I might be able to get fixed up. I, I know there's a bit short-handed. They might be in need of a bit of uh, staff. Hmm. Well, I'll be seeing you then. <laughs> yes, right.
have to find out about that. <laughs> Got a pair of shoes in here. What's your name? I don't know you. I don't know who you are. Hey, Jenkins. Jenkins? Yeah. Jenkins. Did you sleep here last night? Yes. Sleep well? Yes. Well, I'm awfully glad. It's awfully nice to meet you. You know, you remind me of my uncle's brother. He was always on a move, that man, never without his passport. He had an eye for the girls. Very much your build. Bit of an athlete, long jump specialist. Had a habit of demonstrating different run-ups in the drawing room round about Christmas time. He had a penchant for nuts. Couldn't eat enough of them. Peanuts, walnuts, Brazil nuts, monkey nuts. He wouldn't touch a piece of fruitcake. Yeah, it was a funny business. Your spitting image he was. Married a Chinaman, went to Jamaica. I hope you slept well last night. Listen, I don't know who you are. What bed you sleep in? Now look here, eh? That one. No, the other one. No. Oh. Choosy. How do you like my room? Your room? Yes. This ain't your room. You know, believe it or not, you've got a funny kind of resemblance to a bloke I once knew in Shoreditch. Well, actually, he lived in Aldgate. I was staying with a cousin in Camden Town. His old mum was still living at the Angel. All the buses passed right by the door. She could get a 38 581 30 38A, take her down the Essex Road to Dalston Junction next to no time. Well, of course, if she got a 30, he'd take her round Upper Street Way, you know, by Highbury Corner, down by St Paul's Church. And she'd get to Dalston Junction just the same in the end. I used to leave my bike in her garden on my way to work. Yeah, it was a curious affair. Dead spitter, here he was. Bit bigger around the nose, but there was nothing in it. Sleep here last night? Yes! How do you sleep? Uh, sleep well. Now, nah, look, what bed? That. Not the other. No. Choosy. Choosy. What sort of a sleep did you have in this bed? All right. You weren't uncomfortable. All right. You're a foreigner. How do you like my bed? This is my bed. You want to watch out you don't get a draft. Down here. Give me my trousers there. Sit me down for a long stay. Give me my bloody trousers there. Why, where are you going? Give me your. I'm going, I'm going to sit down. You know, you remind me of a bloke I bumped into once, just the other side of Guildford Bypass. I was brought here, pardon. I was brought here, I was brought here. Brought here? Who brought you here? Man who lives here, Eric Fibber. I was brought here last night. I met him in, in a calf. I got the bullet. This bloke saved me from a punch up. He brought me here, he brought me right here. I'm afraid you're a born fibber, aren't you, eh? You're speaking to the owner. This is my room. You're sitting in my house. It says he's, he's seen me all right. That's my bed. What about this one, then? This is my mother's bed. Well, she wasn't in it last night. Now, don't get perky, son. Don't get perky. Keep your hands off my old mum. I, I ain't. I, I... Don't get out of your depth, friend. Don't start taking liberties with my old mother. Let's have a bit of respect. I got respect. 
You won't find anyone with more respect. Why are you telling me all these fibs, then? Listen, I ain't never seen you before, have I? Never seen my mother before, either, I suppose. I think I'm coming to the conclusion that you're an old rogue. You're nothing but an old scoundrel. No. Oh, listen, well, listen, Sonny, you stink. You ain't got You're no... stinking the place out. You're an old rubber. There's no getting away from it. You're an old skate. You don't belong in a nice place like this. You're an old barbarian, honest. You've got no business wandering around in an unfurnished flat. I could get seven quid a week for this place if I wanted to. Get a take it or not. 350 a year exclusive. No argument. Well, I mean, if that sort of money's in your range, don't be afraid to say so. Otherwise, I got the van outside. I can run you down to the police station in five minutes. Have you in for trespassing, loitering with intent, daylight robbery, filching, thieving, and stinking the place out? What do you say? Unless, of course, you're interested in a straightforward purchase. I'll have my brother decorate the place up for you first. Yeah, I got a brother who's a number one decorator. He'll decorate it up for you. You can have this as your study. Yes, this brother I mentioned, he's about to start decorating them other rooms. Well, he's just about to start. So what do you say? 800 for this room or 3,000 down for the whole upper story? Who do you bank with? Who do you bank with? You've still got that leak? Yes. It's coming from the roof. From the roof, eh? Yes. I'll have to tar it over. You're going to tar it over? Yes. What? The cracks. You'll be tarring over the cracks in the roof? Yes. Do you think that'll do it? I think it'll do it for the time being. What do you do? What do you do uh, when that bucket's full? Empty it. I was uh, telling my friend that you're about to start decorating them other rooms. Yes. I've, um, I've got your bag. Hey. Oh. Thanks. Oh, give it to you, did they? What's this then? Give us that. That's my bag. I've seen this bag before. It's mine. This bag's very familiar. What do you mean? Where did you get it? It's it's scrub mine. it. It's mine. Whose? It's my. Tell him it's mine. It's your bag, is it? Give me it. Give it to him. What? Give him what? The bloody bag. Bag? What bag? Oh, now look here. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to get. Don't push too hard. Watch your steps, sonny. You're knocking at the door when no one's at home. Don't overstep the mark, son. You thieving bastard. You thieving scare. Here Let you me are. get it.
Did, uh, did you get down to Wembley? I couldn't make it. I had a bit of bad luck with that portable drill. When I got there, it had gone. Who was that fella? He's my brother. Is he? He's a bit of a joker, isn't he? He's got a sense of humor. Yes, I could tell that the first time I set eyes on him. Yes. He tends to see the funny side of things. Well, he's got a sense of humor, hasn't he? Yes. I'm supposed to be doing up the house for him. There's lots of possibilities about this place. You see, yes, once I get that shed up out there, I'll be able to give a bit more thought to the house, you see. Perhaps I can knock up one or two things for it. I can work with my hands, you see. It's one thing I can do. I never knew I could. But I can. I can do all sorts of things now with my hands. When I get that shed up out there, I'll have a workshop, you see. I could do a bit of woodwork. Simple woodwork to start. Anyway, there's quite a bit to be done to this place. Junk tape, this garden, eh? <laughs> it's got to be cleared. Got all this, you see. <laughs> What's this, a pond? Yes. What you got, fish? No, there isn't anything in there. <laughs> you could be caretaker here if you liked. could keep an eye on the place if you liked. You know, the um, stairs, landings, front steps, keep an eye on it, polish the bells. Bells? Yes, I'll um, be fixing a few down by the front door. Brass. Caretaking, eh? Yes. Yes, well, now, look here, I, um, I never, um, done no uh, caretaking before, you see. <laughs> well, what I mean is I, um, uh, I ain't never been a caretaker before. How do you feel about being one, then? Well, I reckon I, uh, Well, I'd have to know, uh, um, you know, uh, what sort of, yes. uh, what sort, what sort of, um, you know, 
Well, I mean... I uh, mean, I'd, I'd, I'd have to... Um, I'd have to... Yes, I, I could tell you. Well, that's it. <laughs> that's it, you see, do you, get, do you get my meaning? I could tell you when the time... You see, uh, that's what I'm getting at. It's, it's more or less exactly... You see, what I mean to say... Uh, um, what I'm getting at is... Um, I mean... What sort of jobs? Well, there's uh, things like the stairs and the bells. Well, it, uh, it'd be a matter, uh, uh, wouldn't it? it? It would be a matter of a... Uh, of a broom, isn't it? Yes. And, of course, you'd need a few brushes. You'd need... Uh, implements. You need a good few implements. Yes. <sighs> you could wear this if you liked. What? Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Keep the dust off you. Yeah, that's how to keep the uh, dust off, all right. Well off. Thanks very much, mister. Hey, look. I've been thinking. This ain't my bag. No. No, you see, my bag, it, uh, it was another kind of bag altogether, you see. I know what they've done. I, I, what they'd done, they kept my bag and they'd given you another one altogether. No, what happened was someone went off with your bag. That's what I said. Well, anyway, I, uh, I managed to pick this one up somewhere else. It's got a few pieces of clothes in it. He let me have the whole lot cheap. And his shoes. What's this? It's a smoking jacket. Smoking jacket? Yes. It ain't a bad piece of cloth. I, I see how it fits. You ain't got a mirror in there, have you? No, I don't think I have. Well, it don't fit too bad. How do you think it looks? Looks all right. Well, I won't say no to this, then. Uh, excuse me, Governor. Uh, have you... Have you, have you... Uh, what about this bloody snow, then? Hello, what's this? What's the matter with this damn light? Oh, don't tell me the damn light's gone now. What'll I do now? The damn light's gone now. Give me a light. Wait a minute. Oh, damn, where is it? Now, where's the box? Where's the bloody box? Why, well, what's this? Who's this? Where's my box? It was down here. Who's this? Who's this moving it? Who's this got my box? Who's in here? I got a knife here. I'm ready for you. <laughs> Come on, then, who are you? Get away! Ah! 
A wall plug for this cleaner, but it doesn't work, so I had to fit it in the light socket. How do you think the place is looking, eh? I gave it a good going over. Well, after all, I am responsible for the upkeep of the premises, and I. What are you waving that about for? You come near me, eh? Well, now, I am sorry if I gave you a start, but uh, well, I had you in mind too, you know. I mean, my brother's guest. As a matter of fact, I was uh, going to suggest that we lower your rent to make it just a nominal sum. Just nominal, that's all. Still, if you're going to be spiky, I'll have to reconsider the whole proposition. I keep myself to myself, mate. But if anyone starts with me, they know what they got coming. Yes, I can believe that. You do. I've been all over, see? Do you understand my meaning? I don't mind a bit of a joke every now and again, but anyone will tell you that no one starts anything with me. Well, I get what you mean, yes. I can be pushed so far, but no further. That's it. Now, you know what it was? We just got off on the wrong foot. That's all it was. Aye, oh, we did. Would you like a sandwich? What? Have one of these. Don't you pull anything. Hey, no, I, I can't help being interested in any friend of my brother's. I mean, you're my brother's friend, aren't you? Well, I won't put it as far as that. Oh, don't you find him, friend, brother? Well, I wouldn't say we was all that uh, friends. I mean, I mean, he, he never done me no harm, but I wouldn't say it was any particular friend. What's in that sandwich, sir? A uh, cheese. That'll do me. Take one. Thank you, mister. Well, now, I'm sorry to hear that my brother isn't very friendly. Oh, he's friendly, friendly. I never said he wasn't. Salt? No, thanks. I just can't exactly make him out. I forgot the pepper. I just can't get the hang of him, that's all. I had a bit of beetroot somewhere. I must have mislaid it. <laughs> Can I ask your advice? Well, I mean, you're a man of the world, aren't you? Can I ask your advice about something? You go right ahead. And what it is, you see, I'm very worried about my brother. Your brother? Yes, you see, his trouble is... Yeah? Well, it's not a very nice thing to say. Go on, now. You say it. He doesn't like work. Get on. No, he just doesn't like work. You see, that's his trouble. Yes, that's a fact. Well, it's a terrible thing to have to say about your own brother. No, but he's just shy of it, you see. He's very shy of it. I know that sort. You know the type? I haven't met him. Yes, I don't know. He just... I don't like work. Hmm. He's supposed to be doing a little job for me. Well, I keep him here, you know, to do a little job. Hmm. But I don't know. I'm coming to the conclusion he's a very slow worker. What would your advice be? Well, uh, he's a funny bloke, your brother. What? I was just saying he's a, a bit of a funny bloke, your brother. Funny? Why? Well, it's funny. What's funny about him? Not like in work. What's funny about that? Nothing. I don't call that funny. Nor me. You don't want to start getting hypercritical. No, I wasn't don't that too glib. Look, all I'm it. Look, I've got a little proposition to make to you. I'm thinking of taking over the running of this place, you see. I think it could be run a lot more efficiently. I've got a lot of ideas, a lot of plans. Now, how would you like to stay on here as caretaker? What? Well, I could rely on a man like you around the place to keep an eye on things. Uh, well, now, look here. I, I never, um, 
I never uh, done no caretaker before, you see. Oh, you've been in the services, haven't you? The what? You've been in the services, you can tell by your stance. Oh, oh yes. I spent half my life there, man. Uh, uh, overseas, like uh, serving, I was. In the colonies, weren't you? I was over there. I was one of the first over there. Well, that's what I mean. You're just the man I've been looking for. What for? Caretaker. Yes, well, now, now look here. Uh, listen, um, who is the landlord here, around? Him or you? Me. I am. I got deeds to prove it. Oh, well, in that case, I don't mind uh, doing a bit of caretaking for you. I, I don't mind uh, looking after the place for you. Of course. We'd come to a small financial agreement, mutually beneficial. I'll leave you to reckon all that out, Sack. <laughs> Thanks. I'll pay if I sue him pro rata. Oh, yes. Hey, there's just one thing. Have you got any references? Hey? Uh, just to satisfy my solicitor. I got plenty of references. All I gotta do is get down to Sid Cup tomorrow. I know that place right at the back of my hand. I got all the references I want down there. Good. Listen, you can't pick me up a good pair of shoes, can you? I got a bad need for a good pair of shoes. <laughs> Do you think there's any chance of you being able to uh, pick me up a pair? said you wanted me to get you up. What for? You said you were thinking of going down to Sitcup. Oh, wow, well, that'd be a good thing if I could get down there. It doesn't look much of a day. Ah, oh, well, that's shot it then, isn't it? I didn't have a very good night again. I slept terrible. You were making Terrible. It? Had a bit of rain in the night, didn't it? Just a bit. No, I thought so. Coming on me head. The draft's blowing right in on me head, anyway. Hey, can't you shut that bloody window? You could. Well, then, what about it, then? 
The rain's coming right in on my head. Got to have a bit of air. Listen, don't talk to me about air, boy. I've lived all my life in the air. All I'm trying to say is there's too much air coming in through that window when I'm asleep. It's very stuffy in here without the window open. Yes, but listen, you don't understand what I'm telling you. The bloody rain man come right in on me head. That's done my trip to Sidcup. What about closing that window now? It'll be coming in here. Hey. Close it for the time being. You haven't come across that pair of shoes you was going to look out for me, have you? No, I'll see if I can pick some up for you today. I mean, I can't go out in these, can I? I can't even go get myself a cup of tea. There's a cafe just along the road. There may be, mate. There may be. I used to go there quite a bit. Years ago now. But I stopped. I used to like that place. I spent quite a bit of time in there. I thought they understood what I said. I mean, I used to talk to them. Same at the factory. I used to talk about things, and these men, they used to listen whenever I had anything to say. It was all right. Trouble was, I used to have kind of hallucinations. But they weren't hallucinations, they. I used to get the feeling I could see things very clearly. Everything was so clear. Everything used to... Everything used to get very quiet. Everything got very quiet. All this quiet and this clear sight, it was... Maybe I was wrong. Anyway, someone must have said something. I don't know anything about it. Some kind of lie must have got around, and this lie went round. I thought people started being funny in that cafe, factory. Couldn't understand it. Then one day, they took me to a hospital right outside London. They got me there. I didn't want to go. Tried to get out quite a few times. It wasn't very easy. They asked me questions in there. They got me in and they asked me all sorts of questions. Well, I told them when they wanted to know what my thoughts were. Mm. And one day, this man, the head doctor, I suppose it was, he, he called me in. He said, he told me I had something. He said, They'd concluded their examination, that's what he said, and he showed me a pile of papers and he said that I'd got something, some complaint. He said... Just said that, you see. You've got this thing, that's your complaint, and we've decided, he said, that in your interest there's only one course we can take. He said, we're going to do something to your brain. And if we don't, you'll be in here for the rest of your life. But if we do, 
You stand a chance, he said. You can go out and live like the others. What do you want to do to my brain, I said to him. But he just repeated what he'd said. Well, I wasn't a fool. I knew I was a minor. I knew they couldn't do anything to me without getting permission. I knew they had to get permission from my mother. So I wrote to her and I told her what they were trying to do. But she signed the form, you see, giving them permission. I know that because he showed me her signature when I brought it up. Well, about a week later, they started to come around and do this thing to the brain. We're all supposed to have it done in this ward. They came round and did it one at a time, one at night. They used to come round with these. I don't know what they were. They looked like big pincers with wires on. The wires were attached to a little machine. It was electric. They used to hold the man down. And then his chief, his chief doctor, he would fit the pincers, something like earphones. He used to fit them on either side of the man's skull and keep them there. There was a man holding the machine, you see. He'd turn it on and then his chief, he just press these pincers against the man's skull and keep them there. Then they'd take them off, cover the man up, and they wouldn't touch him again until later on. Well, they were coming round to me. The night they came, I got up off my bed and I stood against the wall. They told me to get back on the bed. I knew they had to get me back on the bed, because if they did it while I was standing up, they might break my spine. So I stood up. Then one or two of them came for me. Well, I was younger then. Much stronger then than I am now. I was quite strong then. I laid one of them out. I got another one round the throat, and then suddenly this chief, he had these pincers on my skull. And I knew they weren't supposed to do it while I was standing up, and that's why I... Anyway, he did it. Though I did get out, I got out of the place. But I couldn't walk very well. I don't think my spine was damaged. No, that was perfectly all right. Trouble was, I couldn't hear what people were saying. I, I couldn't look to the right or the left. I had to look straight in front of me. I turned my head round. I couldn't keep upright. And I had these headaches. I used to sit in my room when I lived with my mother and my brother. He was younger than me. I laid everything out in order in my room. All the things I knew were mine. But I didn't die. Anyway. I feel much better now. But I don't talk to people now. I steer clear of places like that cafe. I don't go into them now. I don't talk to anyone like that.
I've often thought of going back and trying to find the man who did that to me. But I want to do something first. I want to build that shed out in the garden. Turn me over, mate. Uh, sitting comfortably, are you? Where are you going? I'm going to sit Sorry, it can't do it. The road will be up on the A222. That will mean doubling back on the B2210. It's all one way down there, you see. And we haven't got enough headroom for the Humpback Bridge, so we'll have to skip it. Hey, come up and have a drink at my place sometime. Listen to some Tchaikovsky. ta -da. See ya. I mean, you and me, we could get this place going. Yes, you're quite right. Look what I could do with this place. I could turn this place into a penthouse. Oh, for instance, this room. This room you could have as your kitchen. Right size. Nice window. Sun comes in. I'd have teal blue copper and parchment linoleum squares. I'd have them colours re-echoed in the walls. I'd offset the kitchen units with charcoal grey worktops. Plenty of space for cupboards for the crockery. I'd have a, a small wall cupboard, a large wall cupboard and a corner wall covered with revolving shelves. Now, you won't be short of cupboards. And a dining room you could have across the landing, see? Venetian blinds on the window, yeah, Venetian blinds. Cork floor, cork tiles. You could have an off-white pile linen rug. A table in Aphromosia teak veneer. Sideboard with matte black drawers. Curved chairs with cushioned seats. Armchairs in oatmeal tweed. Beach frame settee with a woven seagrass seat. White topped heat resistant coffee table. White tiles around. Yes. And a bedroom. Now what's a bedroom, eh? It's a retreat. Place to go for rest and peace. And you want quiet decoration. Lighting functional. Furniture, mahogany and rosewood. Deep azure blue carpet. Unglazed blue and white curtains. A bedspread with a pattern of small blue roses on a white ground. And a dressing table with a lift-up top containing a plastic tray. Table lamp, white raffia. It wouldn't be a flat, it would be a palace. I say it would, man. <laughs> a palace. 
Who would live here? I would. My brother and me. Well, what about me? All this stuff in here. That's no good to anybody. It's a lot of old iron. It's clobber. You couldn't make a home out of this. There's no way you could arrange it. <laughs> it's junk. Mm. He couldn't sell it either because he wouldn't get tuppence for it. It's junk. Mm. But he don't seem to be interested in what I got in mind. That's his trouble. Why don't you have a chat with him and see if he's interested? Me? Yeah, you're a friend of his, aren't you? <laughs> he ain't no friend of mine. You live in the same room with him, don't you? He ain't no friend of mine. No, what you want to do, you want to speak to him, see? You want to tell him, um, uh, tell him that we got ideas for this place. Uh, we could get it started. I'd, I'd decorate it out for you. And I, I give you and in doing it <laughs> between us. <laughs> no, you're the one who wants to talk to him. After all, you're his brother. Yes. Maybe I will. Where are you going? This is him. Where's the laces? No laces. I can't wear them without laces, can I? <laughs> just got the shoes. Well, now, look, this just about puts the tin lid on it, don't it? The only way to keep a pair of shoes on right, if you, if you haven't got no laces, is to tighten the foot, see? Walk about with a tight foot, see? Well, it's not good to the foot. That puts a bad strain on the foot. I might have some somewhere. You see what I'm getting at? Yes. Yes, sir. Um... These is brown. That's all I've got. The shoes is black. Well, they can do until I can get hold of another pair. expect me to do? Stop breathing. What do you expect me to do? I tell you, mate, I'm not surprised they took you in. Waking up an old man in the middle of the night. You must be off your nut. What do you want me to do? Stop breathing. I've had just about enough of you mucking me about. Where'd you invite me in here in the first place? Who's going to treat me like this? I know enough. They had you inside one of them places before. They could have you inside again. They can put them pincers on your head again, man. They can have them on again any time. All they need to do is get the word. They'll carry you in there, boy. They'll come in here, pick you up and carry you in. They'd get you fixed. They put them pincers on your head again, man. They'd keep you fixed. 
They take one look at all this junk I gotta sleep with. They'd know you was a creamer. Ah, nobody messes me about for long. You'll think I'm gonna do all your dirty work. Ah! Think I'm gonna do all your dirty work? Fall up and down them stairs? Just so I could sleep in this lousy, filthy hole every night? Not me, boy. Not for you, boy. You don't know what you're doing half the time. You're up the creek. You're half off. Whoever saw you slip me a few bob. Treating me like a bloody animal. I never been inside a nut house. Don't come nothing with me, boy. I got this here. I used it. I used it. Don't come in with me. I think it's about time you found somewhere else. I don't think we're hitting it off. Find somewhere else? Me? Not me, man, you. You'd better find somewhere else. I live here. You don't. Don't I? Well, I live here. I've been offered a job here. Yes. But I don't think you're really suitable. Not suitable, eh? <laughs> well, let me tell you, there's someone here thinks I am suitable. Get it? Your brother. He's told me, see, he's told me the job is mine. I'm going to be his caretaker. Look, if I give you a few bob, you can get down to sit comp. You build your shed first. A few bob, but I can pick up a steady wage here. You build your stinking shed first, that's what. Don't come too near. That's not a stinking shed. You've no reason to call that shed stinking. You stink. What? You've been stinking the place out. Christ, you say that to me! For days. It's one reason I can't sleep. You call me that! You call me stinking! You better go. I'll stink you! Ah, uh, stink you. Get your stuff. Leave that alone, that's mine. You wait. I've been offered a job here. You wait, your brother. He sought you out. You call me that. You call me that. Nobody hit. You never called me that. You enter at last of this. Be sorry you called me that. Now I know who I can trust.
stink. That's what he said to me. That's what he said to me. You don't stink? No, sir. If you stunk, I'd be the first one to tell you. I, I told him. I, I said to him. I told him you'd be coming along to sort him out. He don't know what he started saying, and say, 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 saying that to me. You ain't heard the last of this man, I said. I said to him, and I, I said to him, he'll be along. Your brother will be along. He's got sense. Not like you. What do you mean? Eh? Are you saying my brother hasn't got any sense? What? Well, what I mean, uh, I take orders from you. Do my uh, caretaking for you. You look upon me as a... As a uh, don't treat me like a lump of dirt. Mm. Well, do you mind if I finish my tea first? Not here. No. Maybe it's down there. Where can the bastard be? Hey, look at that. Look here, I've been thinking. What? As things stand, I don't mind having a go at doing up the place. That's what I wanted to hear. Uh, you better be as good as you say you are. What do you mean? Why, you say you're an interior decorator. You better be a good one. A what? What do you mean, a what? A decorator. An interior decorator. Me? What, what do you mean? <laughs> I've never done that. <laughs> never touched that. You never what? No, not me, man. I'm not an uh, interior decorator. I've, I've been too busy. Too many uh, other things to do, you see. <laughs> I thought you said you were one. Well, I've wait a minute, wait a minute. You've got the wrong man. Well, how could I have the wrong man? You're the only man I've spoken to about my dreams, about my deepest wishes. You're the only man I've told. And I only told you because I understood you to be a first-class, professional, experienced interior and exterior decorator. Ah, look here. You mean you wouldn't know how to fit teal, blue, copper and parchment linoleum squares? And have them colours re-echoed in the wall? Uh, look here, where, you where do you... know how to decorate out a table in Aphromosia teak veneer. Armchairs in oatmeal tweed and a beach frame settee with a woven seagrass seat. I never said that. Christ, I must have been under a false impression. I never said it. You're a bloody imposter, man. Yeah, don't start calling me names. What is your name? No, don't start that. No, your real name. His real name's Davis. What's the name you go under? Jenkins. Oh, you got two names. What about the rest, eh? Now, come on, why do you give me all this dirt about you being an interior decorator? I never told you nothing. It was your brother who's told you. He'd tell you anything out of spite. It's nutty. He's halfway gone. He'd tell you anything. It was him who's told you. <laughs> what did you call my brother? When? He's what? Now, get this straight. Nutty. Who's Nutty? Did you call my brother Nutty, eh? My brother. Well, now, that's... It's a bit of an impertinent thing to say, isn't it? Very sad so himself. Huh. What a strange man you are, aren't you, eh? You're really strange. Ever since you've come into this house, there's been nothing but trouble on this. I can take nothing you say at face value. Every word you speak is open to any number of different interpretations. Most of what you say is lies. You're violent. You're erratic. You're just completely unpredictable. In fact, when it comes down to it, you're nothing else but a wild animal. You're an old barbarian. And to put the old tin lid on it, you stink from arsehole to breakfast time. Well, look at it. You come here recommending yourself as an interior decorator. Whereupon I take you on. And what happens, eh? You make a long speech about all them references you got down at Sidcup and what happens. I haven't noticed you going down to Sidcup to obtain them. It's almost regrettable, but it really does look as though I'm compelled to pay you off for your caretaking. Here's half a dollar.
All right, then. You do that. You do it. If that's what you want. This house was all I got to worry about. I got plenty of other things I can worry about. I got other things. I got plenty of other interests. I got my business to build up, haven't I? I've got to think about expanding in all directions. I don't stand still. I'm moving about all the time. I'm on the move all the time. I got to think about the future. I don't worry about this house. My brother can worry about it. He can decorate it up. He can do what he likes with it. I'm not bothered. I thought I was doing him a favour, letting him live here. He's got his own ideas, let him have them. I'm going to chuck it in. Look, um, Come back to the pipe. Oh, yes? <laughs> yes, I, I got out and then halfway down I suddenly realized that I haven't got my pipe, so I come back to get it. So I thought I'd uh, nip back for it, like. Listen, uh, you didn't mean that, did you, about, about me stinking? <laughs> did you? Did you? Look, look, I've been thinking why I made all them noises. Uh, it was because of the draft. Uh, see, the, the, the draft was on me as I lay sleeping. It made me make them noises without me knowing it. So, uh, what I've been thinking, what, uh, what I mean to say, if, if I was to have your bed, you have my bed, there's not all that difference between them, there's a, the same sort of bed. <laughs> well, you sleep wherever bed you're in, and I'd be out of the draft, you see, that'd be all right. <laughs> well, you don't mind a bit of wind, you like a bit of air. So, I reckon that'd be the best way out of it, we swap beds, then we could get on with what we were saying. I'd, I'd look after the place for you. I'd uh, keep an eye on it for you. I'd caretake for you. Uh, for you, like, not for the... Uh, not for the other, not, not for your brother. For you. I'll be your man. You say the word. No, I like sleeping in this bed. But you don't understand my meaning. <laughs> anyway, that one's my brother's bed. But your brother's gone. <laughs> He's gone. No, I couldn't change beds. But you don't understand my meaning.
Anyway, I'm going to be busy. I've got that shed to get up. If I don't get it up now, it'll never go up. Till it's up, I can't get started. Well, I'll give you hand to put up your shed. That's what I do. I give you hand. You see what I'm saying? I can get it up myself. But listen, I'm here. I'm with you. I'll do it for you. We'll do it together. Christ, we change bites! Look here, listen, man, I don't mind. <laughs> if you don't want to swap beds, all right, we'll keep it as it is. I'll, I'll stay in the same bed. <laughs> if I could get maybe a bit of stronger sacking light to go over that window and keep out the draft. <laughs> That'll do it. Well, what do you say? We'll keep it as it is. <laughs> no. Why not? You make too much noise. Look here, listen. <laughs> listen here. I mean... What am I going to do? <laughs> What do I do? Where am I going to go? All right. If you want me to go, I'll go. You'll say the word. Just say the word. Lisa! If I could get down to, uh, if I could uh, get hold of my papers, would, uh, would you, uh, would, would you let me? If I got down. Got me 